Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Sometimes the words that work are, my lawyer asked me to give you a courtesy call, which is what our OP did in our first story. Most companies don't want to mess with lawyers. They're very expensive. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Threatened my former boss with a lawsuit. About two years ago, I was offered a new job by my former boss's main competitor. They were offering a substantial increase in pay, better benefits, and their office is less than five miles from my house instead of the 25 plus miles I was currently commuting. In short, it was too sweet a deal to pass up. The only problem was that my current contract had four months left on it. I'd approached my boss a handful of times in the previous months to set up a time to discuss extending my contract, but he kept putting it off and told me we'd work something out. I didn't like the idea of running out of my contract with nothing lined up when it expired, so with about six months left on my contract, I started looking for other options. After a couple of months of courtship, the competitor gave me a written offer. I approached my boss after getting the offer and told him that if he wouldn't at least meet with me about my contract, that I'd have to start looking for other options. He told me to wait another month because he wanted to get through the end of the calendar year to see where things stood. I told him that was his decision, but I'm going to need to make decisions for myself in the meantime. I didn't tell him that I already had an offer from our competitor, but I wanted him to know that I wasn't going to do this solely on his timeline. After the year ended, he came to me and offered to extend my contract under the exact same terms. No raise, no increase in benefits, the same as my previous contract. I told him that I had an offer from another company and that I would be accepting that offer. I told him that I would work through the end of my current contract, but at that time I would be leaving. He got mad and said I should have told him sooner. I told him I gave him plenty of chances, but he kept blowing me off. He then said not to bother finishing my contract and that I was fired. So I contacted the competitor, told them what was going on, and they said I could start in two weeks. The legal issue comes from my former boss using my face on his company website to promote his business. I'm also featured in a promotional video on his website. Both the picture and video are literally on his site's front page. You can't miss it. The picture and video are still there after me leaving two years ago. I asked my new company's legal team about it and they said I could probably sue him to get him to take it down if he didn't do it willingly. So I sent my former boss an email requesting that he take all of my likenesses off his company's website as I no longer work for him. He refused and responded with a few choice words regarding my character. I responded that he left me no choice but to take legal action and that he would be hearing from my lawyer. I've never sued anyone before, and it's making me feel kind of like an a-hole, like I'm stooping to my former boss's level, but I don't want people in our industry to think I'm still associated with this company. You attempted to pursue every civil avenue at every interaction. You need to ensure the future security of your career. Securing your likeness is part of that security. Unless there was a clause in your former contract stating that they can use your likeness in perpetuity, then you have a very solid case. Good luck and carry on, dude, or dudette. And our second story. So I'm not getting the promotion you promised? Then I'm not doing the extra work. My wife, Harper's, official title is Mental Health Professional, or MHP. And she's been in this position for three years at a live-in care facility for adults with mental illnesses. Before that, she worked for several years on the mental health ward at the hospital, so she had more experience walking into her current position than anyone else they had hired. Within her first year, she got two lifers to progress in their treatment plan so thoroughly that they both got the okay to move out into the sister program that has more freedom and independence. She was working with a third lifer who was about ready to apply for the sister program when lockdown hit and the transfers between housing or even non-AMA releases were suspended. All this is to say that she's made some very serious and positive changes for this facility from the moment she started working there. They made her the lead MHP and her direct supervisor's boss started giving her more responsibilities, like the morning team report for the whole facility, handling client money, making decisions on big changes to help the overall workload, etc. 
Her yearly review happened in December, which was promised to come with a large raise to reflect all the added responsibilities she'd been gradually given. Of course, it didn't. She stayed on HR about her raise for a month or so after the review itself until the big boss finally brought her into his office to discuss with her a promotion. It'd be a bit tricky because she has her bachelor's in psych and social work, but not her master's, which we're working on getting her back in school soon to complete, and which she needs to officially fulfill the job title they had in mind. Still, she was clearly leaps and bounds beyond her co-workers, often staying over to help clients or to help finish paperwork, filling in wherever she's needed. So promoting her would be cheaper than hiring on someone new. And of course, this would come with an even better pay raise. So for the last few months, my wife has been doing even more for her supervisor's boss and the big boss, anything they ask of her dangling that official promotion over her head, constantly saying it would be a gradual transition and she needs to learn this or that, do this or that to train for it. Out of her own pocket, she bought new binders and other supplies that made the various parts of her job and theirs easier. She planned, reorganized, filled in, whatever. The supervisor's boss even told her verbatim, I don't know what I would do without your help, several times. All this with the promise of an official promotion and a raise. Then it happened. Last week, Harper was tasked with sorting through potential new hires as they'd been hurting for more MHPs for some time, and the bosses had taken some of Harper's clients off her workload to make room for the new responsibilities. She noticed that the stack she was given, all applicants had a master's or qualifying credential in social work. Hmm, worrisome. Two days ago, it was business as usual for most of the day until about an hour before Harper was supposed to clock out. She called me in angry tears, ranting about the conversation she had just had with the supervisor's boss. He told her she would unfortunately be taking on more clients and the promotion would be put on hold for the time being. She said he didn't come right out and say he had decided to hire one of the people with a master's instead for the position. But what he did say was, you'll have to relinquish any added responsibilities and return to being just an MHP. Okay, bet. After trying to calm her down, I gave my normally frustratingly accommodating wife a nudge in the malicious direction. One of the first added responsibilities she was given was the morning report. It was her job to have all the staff gather during the client's breakfast to relay what happened during third shift, the plans for the day, coordinating client appointments, etc. She would have to be in the facility before third shift clocked out to get their notes and then plan a traveling and gas budget for all the appointments, review any safety concerns or incidents, and this all added about an hour to her morning. So how happy was she the next morning when she got to snooze her alarm and sleep in a bit longer? When she got to the facility at her usual clock-in time as an MHP, she said the place was already in chaos. A fight had broken out and someone had some money stolen out of their room. All normal events for this place, but no one was exactly sure on the who or why of it because Third Shift had no one to pass along the notes, so they just filed them and left. Of course, Harper knew where they'd been filed because she organized the filing system no one had thought to check. As soon as Supervisor's boss saw her clock in, he asked why she wasn't there for a report. See, he's always a seemingly sweet and soft-spoken man, which made the sudden change of mind all the more surprising. Harper said she just stared him down, trying not to grin, and said, I'm just an MHP. I can't handle the morning report. She then spent the rest of the day giving him the cold shoulder, relaying only necessary information to him while focusing on her clients and paperwork. I want to be clear, it isn't that they chose a more educated person for the higher position. That makes plenty of sense. It's that they promised her that position, spent the last few months transitioning her responsibilities to that position, promised her the pay raise to go with it, and then ripped it out from under her. That's some underhanded bullcrap. Oh, and since she isn't getting the promotion, she went to HR to see about her overdue yearly raise. She was told no one is getting a raise at the moment because of COVID. Update. Not only did they not give her the promotion she was promised, they gave it to someone else who has several complaints from co-workers about not pulling her own weight. To be clear, both her immediate supervisor and the head manager told her she had the promotion. It was just a matter of getting the budget together after COVID and some other red tape. They made absolutely no mention of anyone else being considered, and no one else had any other responsibilities the way Harper did. Several people disagreed with this other person being the one to get the promotion. 
So when they were all blindsided with the news, it caused a bit of an uproar. Three MHPs, including Harper, quit within the next week. She'll begin working for a nonprofit where she'll get every weekend and holiday off instead of constantly being on a rotation and having to give up family events. F that place. That knife in the back is out, but the scar will always be there. Don't know if there are other similar facilities nearby that she'd be able to work. I couldn't work there after being treated like that. And our last story. The new HOA president forged a signature to make my land part of the HOA. People's behavior can be unpredictable, especially when it comes to money. HOA money. Let me start by saying that I grew up in a small town where there were no HOAs and everybody was happy without one. Unfortunately, with my education, I couldn't find a job there and had to move to a bigger city. My parents were quite rich and when I got married, they gave me money for a down payment on a house. My father thought that the rest I should pay for myself and my wife because joint difficulties helped to get closer to each other. I chose a house on the outskirts of town where a couple of old people used to live and run a small rabbit farm. Now their children were selling the house and the land. The price was small and I managed to pay half of the down payment. Since I can work by hand, I did most of the small repairs myself in my spare time. Within five years, a neighborhood was built next to my land where upper and middle class people live. Recently, the HOA chairman of this subdivision approached me and demanded that I follow their rules and pay fines for alleged violations. The HOA claims that I'm creating a public nuisance because I'm repairing my motorcycle in a shed where there used to be rabbits. What the F? Does that even make sense? I've decided to ignore them. Completely ignore them. But soon I got a letter from a lawyer saying they were going to sue me because they had a signature from past owners that their land was part of the HOA. From owners who died a few years before the HOA was founded. Carl? I don't know, but apparently they thought I was a dumb redneck because I drive a pretty old Jeep Grand Cherokee and a vintage motorcycle. And my house didn't look too rich. A redneck wouldn't go to court, right? I said if they're going to sue me, let them sue me. And a week later, I got a lawsuit with false documents. I don't know how dumb they were, but my lawyer filed a countersuit alleging fraud and extortion. The head of the HOA had to pay a fine and got probation for a year and was also required to do a year of community service. He also lost his job and he had to sell his house. If a crazy man wants to sue you, let him sue you and enjoy the result. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.